Let's get to it. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone with Reline Men and an Elephant. And today I want to talk to you about an LED panel that has become my new go-to here in the Bat Cave and the Bat Studio. It's the DNO 180. And I dig it. Now, full disclosure, DNO contacted me and after a couple of back and forths, sent me the unit. But as always, I hope you know this, my opinions are resolutely my own. In fact, it's interesting, I usually turn down requests like this at this point in our journey because too often I'm disappointed. But Colin Darden at DNO was a straightforward guy on the phone with an interesting story, so I decided I'd give it a go. It's uh, nice when one is pleasantly surprised. Here's the bottom line. The DNO just plain works. It's a solid alternative to Aperture's LS1C, still high on my list. The Daylight Only LS1 Studio is staple in our kit. And frankly, a better alternative for many of you, at least based on my own unscientific sample size of one, than light panels twice the price Astra 6X bicolor, this being the bi-soft I tested a couple of years ago. Sure, compared to either one, the DNO is bigger, heavier, and more pedestrian. I prefer the separate controls and the standard wireless remote of the Aperture. The Astra's industrial design is just drop-dead gorgeous, a whole other level of attention to detail. But you can't really argue with the DNO's output. The proof for me being the fact that every one of my recent videos here in the Batcave has been lit by it, and I'm just happy. I don't want to change a thing. Now, DNO asserts the 180 has a CRI of 96. I wish I owned a Seconic C700 color limiter to confirm, but sadly I do not. A beam angle of 160 degrees which I've only ever seen matched by the Anthem 1, 45 degrees and 46 degrees respectively on the aperture and the light panel, and offers an additional third stop of brightness over our LS1 studio in the real world of diffusion, measured in the back cave as I actually use it. Like the Astra 6X Bicolor and the LS1C, the DNO180 allows you to seamlessly dial in color temperature between 3200K and 5600K, 5500K for the LS1C. Like the C, the DNO allows dead silent running with its fanless, mother of all heat sinks style body. But here's the kicker at 500 bucks, it's almost a third less than the LS1C. More impressively, the DNO 180 is half the price of the Astra. And again, in my limited experience, likely to be quieter, possibly more reliable. I wish I had one in house to test. Now, don't misunderstand. As I said, I love the Astra's industrial design, right down to the yoke, in fact. A yoke design superseded only by that available for the Cream Source Micro, which is extraordinary. I think it's smart that the Astra's power supply is mounted to the yoke instead of the head. They should all be like that. I appreciate that it can be optioned with a DMX module, although that's not what I use. And if my previous experience with the Astra Soft Bicolor is any indication, the output of the 6X should be gorgeous. As is the output of the Aperture LS1, I should add, and the DNO. But the Astra has a fan. To be fair, the quietest I've ever tested. And unlike the all-metal DNO, which I've left on for somewhere between 8 and 12 hours a day, week in, week out, over the last two months, the Plastic House Astra Bicolor Soft simply packed up on me one day and stopped working. It's so beautiful, I just I can't get rid of it. Though this also happened with one other light I recently tested, which is why I now connect all lights through an isobar. Then again... I've never had a problem with aperture lights, ISO bar or not. The DNO's cable connection is a solid locking affair, the cable itself robust. That's kind of it, other than I'd like an app for it, and it does come with a nice enough carrying case. Now, I don't see the 180 on B&H or Adorama, but it is available on Amazon, so I'll put the link down below in the show notes.